Hi everybody, this is an addendum to the video that I just posted on the rules and regulations and legislation that, go, that Jerry Brown and the state legislature in California are passing and really trying to drive home that it is not just companies and corporations that will have to change it will be ordinary, regular Californians, and it's going to be very, very costly. And unfortunately, the corporate changes to adhere to this Paris climate change agreement, if any anybody thinks that these corporations are going to be paying for it and they're not going to be passing along to the individual residents of California as well as every other state you will be paying for it all but I just want to point out some important sites California climate change laws legislation regulations executive orders the executive orders just regarding climate change you have a lot of them the state of California has an awful lot of projects that have been taking place over the years. Climate change project in California. California is a leader in taking action against climate change. In 2006 the climate change project was launched. 2006 these plans have been implemented for a very very long time. The California Air Resources Board is the one of the primary players getting all of these rules and regulations adopted in local governments across the board in California. And yes, they are going for sustainable communities. There's an awful lot of information on this site alone. The scoping plan in 2006, the legislature passed the California Global Warming Solutions Act, which created a comprehensive multi-year program to reduce greenhouse gases, greenhouse gas emissions in California. AB 32 required the California Air Resources Board to develop a scoping plan that describes the approach California will take to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to achieve the goal of reducing emissions to 1990 levels by 2020. So the scoping plan for 2017, click on the link below if you want to check it out. It's 132 pages of rules and regulations that will have unfortunately a damaging effect on Californians, on business, on every energy sector. They're reshaping your state. And I'm going to read just some of the... Uh, even if you just went to Appendix C, Vibrant Communities and Landscapes and potential state-level strategies to advance sustainable, equitable communities and reduce vehicle miles of travel or, or and or Appendix B, local action. And I'm going to read just a few excerpts from these appendixes, appendices, but um, it really is unfortunate that so many Americans are just, uh, they don't really pay attention or even care what their local governments are doing. And when they get hit with the bill, when they get hit with the reality of what their local governments have done, it's too late. But Cal Green Guide to the 2016 California Green Building Standards Code. These are the codes that 
They have been already implementing, but they will be implementing more uh, forcefully in the coming years. What are these green codes? They're following the international codes under the United Nations. This is all Agenda 2030, the reshaping of California the way the United Nations wants it to be reshaped in accordance with Agenda 2030, in accordance with international codes. They want every state, every country using international codes. So it makes it easier for the United Nations once that new world order is established, everybody will be using international codes. No country will be different. It's actually very efficient for the United Nations. And the Cal Green residential mandatory measures, this I couldn't find any um, updated measures for Cal Green. I'm sure they have them. But all of these mandatory measures, some of them are new, some of them are revised. And I look at these, the water conserving plumbing fixtures and fittings. 20% reduction of water use. So they will be limiting your amount of water that you can shower, bathe yourself, flush, uh, all kinds of limitations. The faucets, how much you can use. You can look at all of the uh, all of the codes and they will be auditing residential, homes, commercial businesses, auditing to make sure that that is, that you're up to code. How are they doing all of this? Is it just the local governments? You know, those town hall meetings that you go to? No. They have COGS, councils of governments. This is not just in California. The Council of Governments in California, you have an awful lot of them. These are your Council of Governments operating with your local governments to implement all of the climate change rules and regulations. The Council of Governments, most regional governments in California have evolved from local government collaboration. Accordingly, there are differences in how they form, operate, and implement policy. Regional governments typically plan, fund, and to some extent deliver transportation infrastructure in some regions this is their only function, but other regional governments are formed as general purpose councils of government or COGS under the State Joint Powers Authorities statute. COGS represent the joint powers of cities and counties, while others are transportation commissions created by statute. All regional governments are governed by locally elected officials selected by their peers. Really. These regional governments have more power than those elected officials. And Grindall 61 on his channel makes that very, very clear. So the Council of Governments, this is a map. All of the Council of Governments, which are listed right here, are operating all over California, pushing through 
Agenda 2030. Unfortunately, manipulating the residents of the counties in which they are uh, implementing the reshaping of those communities. And, you know, it's interesting because in reading parts of the appendices of the scoping plan, the 2017 scoping plan, I came across infill, infill development. I didn't even know what it was. The term infill development refers to building within unused and un utilized lands within existing development patterns, typically but not exclusively in urban areas. Infill development is critical to accommodating growth and redesigning our cities to be environmentally and socially sustainable. So that means they're going to be making use of vacant land to build their stack impacts, dense they want high density communities where everybody will be living and shopping and everything will be in walking distance because you won't have your cars. Sustainable communities is what the California Air Resources Board is working towards adopting. I do want to point out once again, these fires in California could have been put out by cloud seeding. They could have made rain. There's technology. There's a company, Aqueous in uh, Australia, the CEO, even offered his technology to break the drought in California years ago. Denied denied. They need that drought. And they need these fires to fool the American public, which is very easy to do, but to fool them into thinking that the drought, the fires, it's all because of climate change. But your drought could have ended years ago. Your wildfire could have ended days ago because the technology that this company has they used in Australia to end a drought and they used in Australia to put out wildfires in Victoria in 2009. Yeah, in fact this company uh, teamed up with Cy Blue, they have technology that what they can do, drought mitigation, flood reduction, frost avoidance, hail mitigation, heat wave mitigation, precipitation, wind reduction, they can gently steer the jet stream into a targeted area to put out a wildfire. So yes, all of these fires are intentional, deliberate, and it's really sad to see this going on. So, in uh, the appendices in the scoping plan 2017, the Air Resources Board instructs the COGS, the Council of Governments, to adopt a community solar program to help realize economies of scale and help residents without appropriate rooftop space to participate in clean energy generation, implement building, energy audit, and retrofit programs and residential solar programs. Adopt residential and commercial energy conservation renewable energy and or zero net energy ordinances and consider requirements for audits 
or upgrades at major renovation or time of sale. The impact of all of these policies are going to be felt shortly on every Californian. Require new residential and com commercial construction to install solar or be solar ready. Adopt general plan policies and diagram designations and zone map and standards that are consistent with the sustainable community strategy in appropriate locations and those locations it will be Northern California Southern California those two mega regions and nothing in between but they have an as of right zoning which I'm not sure what that is design standards and guidelines to enable mixed use walkable compact infill development, high density development that includes a range of housing types and affordability levels. Well, what's affordability in California? <laughs> uh, not much is affordable for an awful lot of people. The actions that these COGS are to take the state, local, and re regional governments need to work together to achieve this shared vision. A number of current and emerging state planning and policy efforts provide the opportunity to articulate and implement this vision and provide state leadership through work with local and regional partners. And these include the Climate Change Scoping Plan, the Regional Transportation Plan guideline, uh, Guidelines, the Sustainable Freight Action Plan, Updated General Plan Guidelines, implement, Implementation of AB 2087 for Regional Conservation Planning, the State Wildlife Action Plan, the Water Action Plan, and Implementation of SB 743 Guidelines, and other updates to the California Environmental Quality Act. So when you see Grindall 61 filming all of those meetings, he pointing out that these sandbag, uh, these appointed government officials or whatever they are, they have more power than the mayors and the, the uh, town councils within that region, and they are all working essentially for the United Nations to bring about Agenda 2030. adopt a jurisdiction-wide transportation demand management plan which sets numeric targets or caps for the proportion of non-single occupancy vehicles. Trips associated with new development and or an overall vehicle miles traveled target. The mileage tax is one way they are reducing the amount of miles that people are driving. But as I read on, you will see what they plan on doing. Update code of ordinances to reduce parking requirements and eliminate parking minimums. Impose parking maximums. Institute paid parking for local on-street parking structures and lots everybody will be paying everybody is going to be paying a high price to have a car in California replace public fleet vehicles and trips with electric or, or alternative fueled vehicles as much as feasible and provide electric vehicle chargers in public spaces Adopt and implement a bicycle and pedestrian master plan, which includes targets for trips taken by bicycle, 
and on foot, adopt complete streets, policies, and active design guidelines, partner with local and regional transit agencies to enhance transit ridership, adopt a transportation management ordinance to require carpool, electric vehicle, and or van pool preferential parking spaces close to the major employment areas. You will have carpool and van pool parking like we have um, handicap parking, making it very costly and very difficult for individuals who, who just want to drive. Um, adopt safe routes to school program that encourages youth to walk or ride bicycles to school. At schools where students drive, reduce the number of student parking spaces to encourage walking, biking, and carpooling. Develop safe routes to transit programs for pedestrians and bicyclists. They have that here in Anderson. I came across an article, I don't know how long ago, I was reading this, safe, safe routes to school program. Huh. And you know what that school program was? Teaching high school students how to walk to school. Talk about a country that infantilizes its people. And I did come across this. When the local government adopts green building standards that exceed the minimum standards, they become mandatory at the local level. Huh. They become mandatory at the local level. Require local specific plans for ride share, designated parking spaces, new bus stops, employment centers, and commercial areas, promote ride sharing and last mile connections, promote smart driving strategies through public education and outreach, restrict idling for all vehicles, especially in sensitive areas such as near schools. Adopt water efficient landscaping ordinances, develop a plan requiring water recycling, gray water, rainwater reuse, develop a residential water efficiency auditing program. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to do further research and find out the specifics. But I will tell you, just in California alone, looking at some of the numbers, wow, this is, this is going to cost high billions, trillion, and those costs are going to be taxpayers. You're going to be footing the bill for all of this. And you know what? You're going to be footing a bill based on the re to reshape California, but it's all based on a lie. It's all based on a lie. They're creating these mega regions, these stack and packs, getting you out of your cars. You will only be allowed in the mega region where you are. You won't be traveling. And it's all about New World Order control, the smart cities, the surveillance 24-7. This is 1984, where you will not own anything anymore. You will be walking, riding a bike within your mega region living in quarters that are very very small they want complete and utter control over every individual in the world as crazy as that sounds it is absolutely true
All you need to do is do the research. All links are below.